Announced in early May, the Colonial Pipeline was attacked by the ransomware group known as Darkseid. Once the compromise occurred, pipeline workers shut down operational technology systems to prevent any damage from being done to the pipeline system itself. The results of this action led to widespread panic on the U.S. East Coast and nationwide news. It also led to a push by the White House to secure these organizations better for the future. Let's dig into this case a little deeper. The Colonial Pipeline is a 5,500 mile pipe that carries 45% of all fuel used on the East Coast. Despite shutting down operational systems to prevent them from being attacked by the ransomware, the news of the shutdown itself caused chaos across the East Coast of the US. This caused a panic in fuel buying and spiking of gasoline prices, leading to more than a few gas stations shutting down after running out of fuel. The Darkside Ransomware Group runs a ransomware as a service operation, meaning that the creators of the ransomware and the distributors of the ransomware are not the same group. Intrusion specialists act as affiliates for the ransomware gang and often end up earning a portion of the ransom split between the developers and distributors. Since August of 2020, there have been increasing reports of dark side ransomware targeting organizations based on financial analysis of that organization or from stolen intelligence. This creates opportunities for attack and extortion. After the infection of the pipeline was discovered, Colonial paid the dark side group $4.4 million in Bitcoin for the file decryptor. However, in a frustrating revelation, it turns out that the decryptor provided by Darkseid was so slow and poorly developed that Colonial instead just recovered from backups because it was faster. After paying the ransom and getting systems back online, it was only about a six day shutdown overall for Colonial as systems were brought back after determining the network was clean. The creators of Darkseid released a statement claiming that they were not politically motivated and they were only focused on making money and that folks should not associate them with any government. They also claimed that because of this, they will do better to check each company they attack before encrypting things. They do this to avoid what they call social consequences. Interestingly though, the Darkseid group shut down operations shortly after. Apparently, infrastructure servers, blogs, and payment systems belonging to the group had been seized, and money meant for affiliates was transferred out of any wallets controlled by the group and deposited into a wallet controlled by an unknown party. After announcing they were shutting down, the group also claimed it would be releasing decryptors for all victims who have yet to pay the ransom, but we haven't confirmed this ever actually happened. When you combine this with numerous cyber criminals on the dark web complaining about never getting their cut from dark side, the reality may be that this group performed what is referred to as an exit scam. This involves a trusted party, like those that control escrow wallets, stealing the cash that has been loaded into their platform and vanishing without a trace. Was the news about their servers being seized and crypto wallets being emptied a ruse by the gang behind Darkseid to get out of paying their affiliates and leave the market after making a massive mistake in who they targeted? Regardless, the attack itself was a catalyst for calls to action in securing United States critical infrastructure. President Joe Biden signed an executive order meant to strengthen U.S. cybersecurity defenses by attempting to modernize the nation's cybersecurity. This is great news, but will it stop this kind of attack from happening again? Nope. This attack is going to happen again, as it has happened before, just on a less devastating scale. Critical infrastructure all over the world has been a specialized target for many criminal groups, both government-sponsored and commercially focused. Efforts being made now to reduce the chance of infrastructure shutdown due to a cyber attack may protect us a little longer, but rolling out these regulations need to have buy-in from any and all organizations that service critical infrastructure, not just those working directly with the federal government. Without proper support from all parties, we're going to have trouble completely securing our infrastructure, and that can create a lot of problems for everyone if not dealt with. Finally, what has been the most unexpected thing about this whole case was the response from the crime groups. It's almost like these groups realized that one of their own poked the wrong bear too many times and now they have more heat on them than ever. Will this be a possible avenue of taking down ransomware for good? By making the consequences so severe and the execution of ransom gang arrests so common that it's just not worth it to the bad guys? Or is it up to our personal and business defenses to finally fend off the wave of ransom attacks? Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.